Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. welcome back to my channel. A comet that hasn't been seen in 50,000 years is passing through our stellar neighborhood. This week, Comet C2022 E3 ZTF will reach a magnitude or brightness that is visible to the naked eye, although it probably won't be as impressive as Comet Neowise that we saw a few years back, and most people will likely need binoculars or a telescope to see it. It will make its closest approach to Earth on the 2nd of February, and this will become even brighter as the ice and dust is evaporated off, possibly reaching a magnitude of 5.4. In comparison, Neowise reached a magnitude of 1, so Neowise was much, much brighter, but then it will start to dim again. Well, that's assuming that it survives that long. Comet brightness can be highly unpredictable, and so it may well be that we get a spectacular view or it fades away completely. In this week's video, let's talk about how people discover comets, and then I'll tell you how to see this particular comet. So let's start. The majority of comets these days are found by professional surveys. Like the comet C2022E3 ZTF, the ZTF stands for Zwicky Transient Facility. That's the facility that discovered the comet with their wide field survey camera in March last year. Amateur astronomer discoveries do exist, such as Terry Lovejoy, an IT specialist who has discovered six comets to date. But these kind of discoveries are rare, as amateur astronomers tend to make discoveries that are close to the sun where the surveys don't tend to look. To do this, they take several images of the sky consecutively and look for objects that move in between the exposures. Now, you can do this by eye by flicking through the images by hand, but nowadays there is a software that can help you do this too. Be aware, however, not all changes in images are comets. Variable stars, supernova explosions, and asteroids will all show changes in brightness or movements in the images. You'll also have to be careful of noise and other artifacts. The Central Bureau of Astronomical Telegrams, CBAT, which I will link below, is the official worldwide notice board for new discoveries of comets, asteroids, supernovae, and all other transients. As you can see, this month alone, there have been several new potential comet discoveries. If we look at CBET 5111, we find our comet. Now, when comet C2022 E3 ZTF was first identified, it was actually mistaken for an asteroid, and only with further observations was it revealed to have a coma, a fuzzy cloud of gas and dust surrounding the nucleus that indicated it was a comet. For every real comet discovery, there will be five missed identifications, so it's really important that you check it's a real discovery before posting a notification on CBAT, either by taking more observations on another night or by asking for confirmation from someone else. You should be careful of this though because you want to make sure that the comet is named after yourself, so you want to be the first one to contact CBAT about it. Also, you need to check it's not an already known comet. You'll need several observations of the comet and its positions in the sky to calculate its orbital trajectory. After several days of observations, you'll be able to calculate an orbit and compare it to other known comets. The ephemeris is a table of the trajectory of astronomical objects in the sky, and this will be calculated for the comet, giving its predicted positions over time, its velocity, and its magnitude. So the more people can observe and track the object that you've found, when you've got the positional measurements in hand, you can head to software such as Stellarium to plan your observations. On the 5th of February, we can expect the comet to be at a right ascension of 5 hours 17.11 minutes and a declination of 52 degrees 11 arc minutes. On Stellarium, we can set the location to our location, for me it's Coventry, set the date and time to when we want to observe, so 5th of Feb, and then turn on the equatorial grid. Following this grid to RA 5 hours, declination 52 degrees, we'll see the comet. 
If you click on it, it will give you more information about that object. Note that Stellarium's already predicted ephemeris into more up-to-date values than the original one posted on CBAT, and this is because they'll have access to more observations taken of that object over time. The more observations that you have of the comet, the better you'll be able to predict its trajectory. If we zoom out and then turn on the constellations, we can see that the comet will be in the east, quite high up in the sky, in the constellation of Auriga. Usually I find it easiest to find objects like this by comparing to easier to spot constellations. And for me, I find it really easy to find the Big Dipper and Gemini. If we draw lines between the back of the bear and the arms of Gemini, we can easily find the bright star Capella, and the comet is just a little bit off from that. The great thing about Stellarium is that we can change the time to see how the comet will move. As you increase the days, we can see the comet slowly moving further eastwards towards Mars. Now that will be such a beautiful sight. Anyway, that's all for this week's video. If you get a chance with a clear sky, it's definitely worth a look, but don't get too excited. With the given magnitude, it's probably not going to be as spectacular as Comet Neowise that we saw back in 2020. But now that you know how, you can discover your own comets and even have a go at observing some that have already been found, not so mainstream ones perhaps. If you do manage to spot the comet, please tag me in a post or on my Instagram, and then I'll make sure to reshare it. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.